Yeah. All right. After the uh, big snowstorm uh, that we had to cancel on Thursday, thank God we did. Uh, there's still a lot to learn from last week's parasha, and thank you. The parasha really reveals to us the wholeness of Yaakov Avinu. Uh, the way he is, what does it mean to be whole? And throughout that, also, the wholeness of the avodah, of what we need to work on, uh, and the way to get to this stage of being complete, being whole. Therefore, this is not really for Parashat HaShavuah. This is more of like a lesson in life, uh, what they call it, Gilui Avodat HaTzadik. Like, what is this to be tzadik? How do you become a tzadik? And so on and so forth. Uh, so a person does it like this, and then what we do, of course, is to what we call biru anitzotzot, selection of the of the holy sparks that fell into the into the, to the debris, and how every aspect of our life could enter the realm of kedusha. In other words, every aspect of our life to become holy. How do we do that? It's really a problem when we look. At people, and many times, okay, in shul I'm holy, at yeshiva I'm holy, but when I go to work I become just like anybody else. And then you come up with some excuse for that. That does not happen. You should be able to, to reveal holiness in all aspects and all ways of, uh, of, uh, of your life. Now, you know, many times... Everything is going your way, you know, everything is a cult of a affair, uh, until you all of a sudden realize that you had a little accident with, uh, I don't know, let's say, the head of the mob argument, saying, right? Um, you had a little accident and you go to the nice young guy and you ask for, can I please get your insurance, right? And so on and so forth, you're not screaming and yelling. And all of a sudden, the, the, the last thing that you remember is the smell of gasoline in his, uh, in his trunk and the sensation of the cold water once he tosses you over the bridge. And then you wonder, like, uh, wait, uh, what exactly happened? Everything was good until now. Each and every one of us has an ideal time on his life where we call it like the golden age of your own life. Right? We all have it. And it doesn't make a difference what country you're at. We all have this time, hey Rebs, where, uh, you know, whether, whether you were in yeshiva, you know, oh, I remember the years in yeshiva, you know, I don't know, whatever years you were in, oh, that was the best. Or a certain period at home with your parents when everything was fine and everybody was healthy and so on and so forth. Uh, whether you go, if it's a girl, she goes to seminary, or if it's in Israel, where they go to the army. Or, Everything is, is good, everything is flowing, everything is nice and warm and fuzzy and, and, and nice to touch and you know, and then all of a sudden things start to get a little bit more complicated and still things become more complicated and then you're going into a vertigo and into a nosedive and you are in domain, welcome to the domain, when, as they say, welcome to the jungle. And it's a... Uh, uh, what? 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 <laughs> Which of, of, of Guns N' Roses? Yeah. 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 I don't know what a guy is yelling. I just like him to yell. It's good. I guess it's good therapy. I should have been a rock star. You know, like screaming. Down. Most of the stuff they yell, you can't understand. But that's okay. Welcome to the jungle. Welcome to the mess. It's a big balagan. Things start to get complicated. Uh, you're going into the places of depression and, 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 and you're stuck in somewhere, this level or another. Things are stuck, things are become stagnant, you're not moving anywhere. And uh, should we say more or less, uh, it's, it's really like crumbling. It's like driving on a, on a flat tire and two tires. Opposite, you know, direction, you know, like there's everything is like 
there's no there's no wind anymore for you to carry on there's no feeling of like great life is great everything life is goes in slow motion you could like see the hit, the hand coming to you and it's like slow motion whack <laughs> and then another time whack like this from all directions you don't know where it's coming you know and and and, and many times you know and, and you, you hear people say, you know, listen, I'm really trying. I'm trying so hard, but it doesn't work for me. For whatever reason, things don't go my way. I, uh, I lost my innocence. It sounds like a little maiden from like North Ambria somewhere. And I lost my innocence. Right? I, uh, I, 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 wise, I became wiser. I realized that I sobered up. I realized that things are not as good as... And, and so on and so forth, or, you know, when we were young, you know, always, when we were young, things were so much better, you know. Meanwhile, everybody's looking for retirement, but everything was so much better than this. I don't know, it's like a crazy thing in life, the way that we will live life. It's, it's, it's really crazy. And uh, by the way, if you, if you identify, I see all of you shake your heads, you know, like a little, you know, bob, you know, things in the car, you know, you shake your heads. You know, like this, of course, if you could identify with that. Uh, don't worry, because it happened to the great people. Oh, you know, it happened to great people. It happens to everybody. It happened even to Yaakov Avinu. The person that we know, Ishtam, an innocent Yeshevo Alim. Everything is Ankidere Pichikin. I call Tovey Affair, little goats here, you know. Mami Rivka is making the lights over there. She covered, imagine this, you know, warm milk from the from the goats. Baklaba every day. I mean, like, sit down, learn the Torah. I call Tovey Affair, you know. Terrific. Again, all of a sudden, Habibi, they're coming him, uh, listen, uh, everything was good until his um, mommy said to him, listen, uh, Yaakov, John, my dear Yaakov, just, just take your, your little cardigan and, 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 and uh, your, uh, your slippers, please put on your boots that your brother wears and the leather jacket and pretend you are him for a little while. And then everything goes south on that point at all. I don't know what's so wrong about leather jackets, but you know you get you get the drift, right? Uh, and this is only to get the the the, 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 the huh? That's such a good call. It's, it's I mean I love leather jackets. Yeah, we I mean, just see Jacob Avino like on a motorcycle, you know, going like this. You know, what happened to your beard? There's a wind like blew your beard. By the time you look like a man, don't say a word. Anyway, let's go. We won't say who is that, Avner. I mean, yes. <laughs> Don't say who it is. <laughs> Avner, grow a beard. Be a man. Right? And then uh, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he starts to get threats on his life. And he's, uh, he's running away. Uh, things are difficult financial. He's lonely. He has unbearable boss. Uh, very challenging uh, marital relationship, should I say the least. You know? I mean, listen, he got four mother-in-laws. And, and, and what else? I mean... He's, he's, got, he's coming from a place of protection of Kedusha to a place of Tumah. In other words, he's coming to the chamber of Klipo, to the chamber of the husks. From purity, he comes to the husks. And now he has to shovel, excuse me, he has to shovel poop for a long time. And it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. He goes from the Holy Land to Chutz Laaretz. And it says, of course, in Masachet Tuvot, it says, "Shekol adar beeretz Yisrael domek imi sheyesh lo eloah, bekol adar bechutz laaretz domek imi lo en lo eloah." Look, uh, I think we did this stuff. You'd give him. Anybody who lives in Eretz Yisrael is like he has a god, and everybody who lives outside of Israel it is like he doesn't have a god. And not, not for nothing, we say la redet me'aretz to go down from Israel, la alot laaretz to make aliyah. To elevate yourself to Eretz Israel, there's something that is happening there, and so on and so forth. And we are talking here, of course, about two different spiritual levels that are completely different. Yaakov Avinu is not just going to Chutzla, it's not just leaving Eretz Israel. He goes to the biggest crook that is around. <laughs> Madoff is like a kid's game next to this guy. <laughs> he, he wrote the book about how to be a you know, yeah, how to be a, yeah. Anyway, his name is Lavan Ha'arami, right? We all know him, our great, great uncle. Ha'arami, also, if you take the words and you, you know, scramble them, it says Lavan Ha'aramai, right? It's the same thing, the cheat, the crook, right? I should have run for office or something. And, uh, 
איזה עצה, איזה עצה הוא למד, מה ביקש לבן הארמי לעשות, ביקש לעקור את הכל, הוא רוצה לעשות את הכל, הוא רוצה לעשות את הכל, הוא רוצה לעשות את הכל, כי אז הוא יכול לעשות את הכל, 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 let's say a guy who was, let's say, a president, right? He doesn't make a lot of money. He only makes like $250,000 a year and so on and so forth. How does he buy a house for $8 million? I mean, where's the money coming from? I'm just wondering, you know? Maybe I should run for a Maybe there's like an, un, you know, an song, you know, whatever. Anyway, so why, why, why? Why does this thing happen? Of course, the question, why does it happen? Why does it happen to me? What's the purpose of all this thing? You know, it's something that we always ask ourselves all the time. So really, the, the, if, we, if we want to really get to the bottom of it, we have to understand that it really started a few parashiot ago when Yitzchak Avinu gave a blessing to Yaakov uh, when he was, uh, uh, you know, like a kilayim, some kind of a shotless animal, you know, uh, with his voice but the hands of, ya- of Esav. Kind of mixed everything together. I called Paul Yaakov, and Yadayim Yadayim Yadayim. He mixed it up. And, and why does he bless him like that? Because by the eyes of, by the eyes of Yitzchak, an appropriate leader needs to be very uh, 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 well-rounded and very, uh, how should I say it, uh, experienced in the matters of this world. It's very difficult to be a leader when you don't know even how to deposit a check or how do things work. You know, you have to know how the work works. You have to know some psychology, you have to know. So in Yaakov, you know, that's, that's the way, that's the way he looks at that, right? And he says, you don't have to just be in, uh, in the tents over there in some kind of oasis in the desert, but you have to be a dumb shalem. In other words, you have to control not only your spiritual world, not olam ruchani, but you also have to take responsibility for olam gashmi, from the materialistic world, on all these aspects, even if they're not so pleasant. Even if they're not so pleasant. It's not enough, according to that school of thought, to be a, a, a big tzaddik or yeshiva in order for, to fulfill your world, to, to fulfill your purpose, you also have to deal with the turret. You have to deal with this. You have to deal with things like well. this as well. Only in such a matter, Yaakov could receive the bracha that would guarantee the continuation of Am Yisrael and, of course, the purpose of Am Yisrael. I mean, we see it from David HaMelech. The Gemara says in Megillah that David HaMelech, his hands were dirty. David HaMelech was the posseh for women who had questions regarding Alachot Nida. David HaMelech, David HaMelech was sent somebody else. No, he has to be involved with that as well. So that's what, that's what we are seeing here. Uh, and And... When he's, a, when, when, when he's a leader and he's appropriate in Olam Zeh, which is Yedei Esav, also by Olam Aba, called Yaakov, that's going to be possible. So the, the bracha that Yaakov received is really a dramatic turn in his life. From being a person that is always secluded for, a, for, for the yeshiva, for, he's now Isha Olam Gadol. Still, that doesn't teach us how to deal with problems. So, and since, of course, that, and in order for that, Yaakov sees difficulties in his life. It's all one crisis after another. From that point on, until his death, one crisis after the other. And when he goes to Be'er Sheva and he goes to Haran, right? It says, the, the Zohar says, Atar de Dina ve'rugza taman. It's a place of din, of judgment, and rog is HaKadosh Baruch Hu is unhappy with people over there. And we need to understand that the mahalach, the, the path in which a person needs to take, uh, take in life is 
to achieve higher madrigot, higher levels. You know, you think about a person, 50, 60, 70 years old. No wonder you're stopping, you're saying, everything that I fought for, that I got angry about, that I was, what's the purpose of all of this? For what? Why I was getting upset at my boss that told me to stay another hour. Is it worth it? Why did I volunteer to stay another hour? What's the purpose of everything that I do here in life? We're well going to die. What's the purpose? And maybe we should discuss this some other time. But you got to really think about what you do. And we don't think. And then one day it hits you. And you say, my goodness, my life was a waste. A waste of my life. All the things that you realize that now that are important, you'll come to see that are absolutely not important. And I can tell you this. Everything that you think is important is a waste of time. Besides, of course, what we're doing here. It's a waste of time. Not because... It by itself is because your approach to it is a waste of time. You have it all wrong. Everything. <clears throat> so, if that is the destiny to go, to, to reach higher levels, you need to understand that you're never going to be in a situation where you're going to be comfortable. There are always going to be movements and changing in your life. If you're secure financially, there's going to be something else. I don't know. Your, 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 your prostate is going to be in luck. You're going to go to the bathroom four times a day. Your kid is going to become, I don't know what. You're, always something is happening. Nothing is going to be tranquilo. You want the water to be like in the in the Bahamas, like shh, like this, you know, coming. But you know what's going on in the water? It's a war. Fish eating a fish. Fish are dying. Fish are born. You just always look at the surface, but the surface is the most deceiving thing is out there. So you were destined to walk, to proceed in in, in your life. And because it says, Abraham Avinu says, Neymar lo lech lecha. Lech lecha in order for him to acquire higher levels, extra levels of, of, of elevation. Because he's not complete yet. That's what you need to go to complete yourself, to make yourself better. That's why I don't understand when people told me, tell me they're bored. How in the world could you be bored? There's so many things to do. And, I, and I'm not talking about writing a PhD thesis. Like, for example, clean your room. <laughs> clean the toilet for crying out loud. There's, there's, there's so, so many things to do. You just... And the problem is, is with this attitude. As the, uh, as the Zohar says, Amar Rabbi El Azar, Lech lecha hainu le'atzmecha, Kumar, Fix the level that you're at. So when Yaakov Avinu comes with the difficulties that the world puts upon him, he might actually forget Akadosh Baruch Hu himself. And that in Akadosh Baruch Hu world, everything is unified. And he's going to enter the world of Pirud, the world of separation and fragmentation. And that's why people who like to fragment and to put, you know, to take things apart are the people that don't have a Muna, regardless of how much they like to paint themselves or people of great Muna. If I think that I'm such a Muna person and I try to make enemies between you and you so I could control you, <laughs> I don't have a Muna. I have anything else but a Muna. Maybe audacity and so on and so forth. You have to understand that. That's called olama piyirud. A person that likes to take things from, from other things. Right? Oh, which school are you going to? You're going to this school? Okay, forget it. You know, go to his school. Where school is he going? 
is a person that's action of lack of emuna. Again, regardless of what you think you are, because in the world of Akadosh Baruch Hu, unity is what it's all about. Separation. That's a person that doesn't believe in God. That doesn't believe in the way that Akadosh Baruch Hu runs the world. You have to be very careful. I'm telling you now a very good indication to stay away from people like that and to stay away from, from incidents or, or organizations that like to separate the people. Whether it's individuals, whether it's parties, whether it's shuls, whether it's whatever it is, political parties, whatever it is. The world in the, the world of Akadosh Baruch Hu, we should strive to put things together. I didn't say abolish you know, individualism, but unity, understanding the place of everything. And everything is a place. Now, when you enter this world without unity, you're basically saying that the world is being run by two entities, not by one. Right? There's Yetzer Tov, Yetzer Ra, Ayin Ra, Ayin Tov. Akadosh Baruch doesn't run the world. Some old grandmother, you know, with a bad eye, you know, like, you know, Billy with one eye, you know. Over there she goes with luck. Oh, that kind of, yeah, 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 burn the witch. You know? You know, she runs the world, not God. That is a nonsense. That's why they call superstition. You have to be absolutely stupid to believe in superstition. Some old grandma, you know, like a garlic bread. Oh, gotta get that. You're my puppy. How do you call it? My precious. <laughs> no, my precious. Ah, the rings. Oh, the, the rings, yeah. I don't remember what it was, but my, my son used to tell me all the time, my, when he was a kid, my precious, so what is this thing? <laughs> right? He's like, well, what are you guys thinking? That's Olama Pihud. So, of course, Yaakov Avinu might think so, then all of a sudden he sees this famous Sulam. We can talk about this Sulam, this, this ladder that Yaakov Avinu said, like, we write a book about this, this, you know, I don't know where he got this Sulam, probably in the Home Depot, there was such wonderful Sulam, you know, like ladder that he sees, it's just a Sulam, and that's the revelation of Hashem, that actually tell them that this world itself, and including Yaakov himself, is a ladder with ups and downs, life is all about up and down. What goes up must come down. You know the song? Blood, sweat, and tears. What do you guys know? Nothing. What do you know? Arianda Muy Grande. What do you guys know? Anyway. So, and of course, it all depends on you, on the direction, on how you look at it. You know, it depends how you look at things. It's on your perspective. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are angels that go up and there are angels that go down. But the most important thing is not the movement of the angels. The most important thing is one thing and one thing only. Hashem needs Savalav. Akadosh Baruch Hu is on top of the Sulam, and He blesses us and He directs, he directs the direction of. He's the conductor. And Akadosh Baruch Hu blesses Him in, a, in, 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 a, in materialism and in spiritual as well. And he, and, he, and he promises Him that even though He's entering the core of materialistic endeavors in the world, He's not going to leave Him. I'm not going to leave you. So here in this uh, night vision that he had when it's very, very cold, and then the, in the, in the entrance of this dark black hole, that it's called exile, that he's going to be sucked in. Yaakov understand, there is Hashem in this place. In other words, he's everywhere, even in this place, even in this place. Even when he left Beersheba and, 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 and so on and so forth, even in the Yerida, even on the way down, even in the difficulties, even in the most difficult crisis, the deepest crisis, Hashem is there also. And He's standing on top of me as well. He's not leaving me alone. Everything comes from one Shovesh, one root, whether the, the, the going to exile to Galut, or, or the world and so on and so forth. Everything, everything is from, from Hashem. And everything, in a way, becomes an opportunity to reveal and to expose and to bring about the unity of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in this world. The going up and the going down complement one another. Because it's all relative. 
If there's no down, there will never be up. And if there's no up, there'll never be down. They're all relative to one another. And that depends on your perspective and how do you look at it. I was just paying the Shiva call last week to a friend of mine that lost his son. I was, I was amazed. Instead of me doing the Chumay of Elim to him, he was Menachem me and the other people there. I was shocked at this man. At his, at his level of Amuna that he was, that he was showing. It was a lesson to me. It's shocking to me. It's unbelievable. Even in the most difficult times, you should understand that Hashem is there with you. And everything is a perspective. And I said to you a million times. Imagine, for example, you are in a job that is not good for you. You know it's not good for you. You bitch and moan and you complain and you hate it. But you're never going to leave because you're afraid. And Hashem says, listen, this place is not good for you. Habibi, leave. Nah! So he puts Alecha Melech Rashaki Haman, a horrible boss. No, I'm not leaving. Hashem says, okay, Tishma, I love you. Okay, fire him. So he's being fired. You're being fired. Being fired, you're upset. Hey, where is God? You're crying like a little baby, right? Throwing your little temper tension, going like this with your feet. <laughs> Guess what happened? You get a job. Two weeks later, after you got the job, they close the place down. The whole place goes bust. Chapter 11, ever been fired. Now you're ahead of the game. Say, man, sound lucky. You're lucky. Where were you two weeks ago when you were complaining about God? About how difficult it is for you? It's all about love. So you ask the question. It's all about love to Akadosh Baruch Hu and understanding that He operates with you through love. And where are you? Why don't you understand that? But you don't believe that there is God out there? You don't believe that God controls the world? That he, rules the, he, he rules the world? He's the king? He's the, he's the one? It's not about you. And... Only when you go down, you can see, you could see that you could reveal. But if I walk in the valley, valley of death, lawyer should not fear. Why? Because you're with me. You're whipped, and I by you whipping me, I know that you are there. That's my support. That's my comfort. I know you're there. Yaakov Avinu goes to meet Lavan with all the cheating and all the lying and all this life of tzimtzum, of condensation. It's very difficult. It's a war. But this is only to compliment him, to make him more able and capable to deal with the different facets and different aspects of life. And by doing so, to become shalem, to become whole. And he says, Vayavo Yaakov, shalem. He came complete. Oh, so are we. When we find a reality that is opposite our expectation, we expect that something to be on us. I mean, our reality is completely different. Wait, are we going to go to work? Everything is going to be okay. People are going to say, well, here you go. College graduate, you're so wonderful. Please, have a window office. We're going to put you in a window. We're going to pay you a salary. You just have to thank you for doing us a favor. Meanwhile, put you in some kind of a closet. Right? Back again, if you're not out of there. Right? You're going to make tea all day long. You're not going to see daylight. And... Right? All of a sudden, you had expectation of yourself, and you're not. Then you got to really say, well, what an idiot that was to leave Yeshiva. I won't argue with you with that. However, you should know that regardless of the expectation of your life, right? Even if you find like this, you still have to continue searching and looking after Hashem. You need to be able to see Achen Yesh Hashem Bamakom Even here there is Hashem. Even here Hashem guides you. That's your job. That's your job to look, to find. That awareness, you need to develop this awareness that would complete the two opposing factors that right now you face in your life. 
And all of this, only for one reason, to show you, to reveal God into your life. Hidgalut, the revelation of God in your life, in every single day, every single thing that you do, as simple and mundane it is. And if you're not, you're not looking and you're not progressing spiritually. And not to progress spiritually is, is death. Zombies, people who don't progress spiritually, they're like this on a level. And they, they get whacked, and they get whacked again, and they get whacked again. I, I, you know, that's why Yaakov was so angry with Rachel. He said, Don't give me kids. He said, What do you want from me? Go speak to God. But I'm a kind of kid. You know, look, I have kids. You don't have a kid. Why don't you have a kid? Maybe you should pray. By the way, I heard recently the new thing. Women don't pray Shmonais. They just say a few brachot. They say, I can't please something, okay? What kind of nonsense is that? Oh, look who's coming here. Shout out to about 10 minutes before our meet. So we call you Mashiach. Well, we you understand? For that, maybe, maybe that's what difficulties that we have. Women don't pray. I mean, if you date a girl, you should ask her, do you pray? Do you pray Shmona Yisrael? If you don't pray Shmona Yisrael, say, here, is the, here, I gave you an Uber, goodbye. I don't want a woman that doesn't pray. What's going to be next? She's going to wear pants and not cover her hair? If she wear pants, you've got to watch out. It's terrible. It's much terrible. So we need to make sure we have this revelation in the most difficult aspects of our life to find God. And do not compromise. Somebody is hard for him to find the Shidduch. He's not praying for Hashem. Okay, first one come, first, first come, first serve. Yalla, let's get over with this. What kind of a mahalach is that? Why was it hard for you? Because HaKadosh Baruch who wants you to pray? He likes you. If HaKadosh Baruch did not like you and everything was going your way, I'll tell you this. I'll be very careful. I'll be, I would be scared. I'll be scared. Difficulties, Rabotai, is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Then all of a sudden you see miracles. Just look at the bullshit. Look at the Avot. The Avot did not complain we don't have kids. Yaakov Avinu. I mean, what bunch of girls you are. How old are you? I am 25 years old. I'm getting married. <laughs> Mommy's crying. I didn't say Rivka is telling Yaakov, you're 60 something years old. You're close to retirement. You're not having kids yet. You're not, you're not getting married already. You don't hear Yaakov say, all the peers of my age got married. How about me? What are you do for him? I mean, seriously. You're not looking for God. You're looking for idols. And we know if a person Hashkan of Shubat Torah ke Ben Azai is patur from getting married. Not Zarich, patur mi pur vu, is patur. Is patur. Did you find anywhere in the Torah a mitzvah to get married? By the way. Right? So, on this Maimar, on, on Parashat Vayetzei, Rav Dessler said something very nice, and I'm quoting. Hashlemut hi achdut ha'adam hanovat mitokev midat ha'emet. Being whole is the unity inside the person that stems from the quality of truth. How much do you strive to be whole, to be complete, will be determined, will be in direct correlation of how truthful of a person you are. And you gotta, you gotta take this into heart. If you don't, if you want to look at this in Mechtav Eliyahu in Chelek Kerach Bet. So the quality of Avraham Avinu is Midat Ha'emet, which is the Enza, the Kava Enzai, which connects between Chesed and Gvura. Not too much to the Chesed, not too much to the Gvura. Somewhere in the middle, he makes Oseh Shalom, Oseh Shalom B'Gomar. He's he's the in between. Yaakov Avinu is called Tif Eret. Which is the middle line, and that's why it's called also Adam Shalem. Bechira Avot. He's the, he's the, uh, the top. 
Rav Dessler continues and says, Aisha Shalem, the complete man, and I'm quoting, a non mafchin bechol amidot, bechol aitaroyot shel ha-yetzara kulam, doesn't pay attention to any kind of awakening of the yetzara inside of him. Remember what we spoke about yetzara last week. And it says, Ela kekhilim ameshamshin letzorchei avodat Hashem levadot. Even if he has a yetzer, that is, if he has a ta'ava, desire, that is also becomes a vehicle, a vessel, to do avodat Hashem. Until there's not going to be even one speck inside of him that is going to be for serving of the non-holy part in him. Many times you hear rabbis are saying that a person is not allowed, not allowed, not allowed. I think it's Rav Schoenberger says that. You're not allowed to say something. Yes, Allah calls me that. Or this, 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 uh, the fact that I can't do it is because the Yetzirah, you know, I would like to, but the Yetzirah prevents me from doing so. He says, which is very common uh, uh, slogans that people use, especially when they have difficulties in life. Why? Because by using those words, we give, we give authority, we give justification. We acknowledge that the Yetzirah exists and not only exists, it's an entity by itself, Chazmah Shalom to say, that in a way creates a reality different than HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the only reality out there in the world. When you say Yetzirah, it's like Yetzirah Tov Yetzirah. That, that's where the Christians made Satan and uh, whatever, it is, whatever his name is. No such thing as Satan. Satan is just a Malach, just like any other Malach, you know? Because Baruch Hu do something, he does it. But Satan doesn't say, mm, ah, let me go down to Georgia, I was looking for a soul to be, you know. I get his head, you know. Look, it's nonsense. No thing in the world, in the universe, the creation in the spiritual or physical world has a reshoot, the ability to do something on its own without the authority of HaKadosh Baruch Hu saying, if I go ahead, you can do that. You can't do things on your own. Only us. He gave us bechirah of shit, and that's why we get punished. I mean, you're watching too many movies, you know, like uh, fairy tales or uh, you know Hans Christian Andersen. I don't know what you're gonna be doing, but it's a waste of your time. It's nothing else but laziness, Rabotai. Laziness. And. Uh, we always have to remember, we have to get used ourselves to uh, the understanding and to the acknowledgement that Yetzirah, if there is such thing, is only a, a, uh, is only a messenger. As we said, when you are not pursuing mitzvot, the Avot will come. Why? Because the klipa, the tum'ah, the impurity, only feeds on the remnants of the Kedusha. The Kedusha is what brings light brings life. If there's no life and there's no light, the tum'ah, the impurity, cannot survive. So, if you have, quote-unquote, the yetzerah, the evil inclination, the devil has crept inside of you, it's only because you're not doing mitzvot, you're not doing something positive. Do something positive, you don't have time for this. That's why they say, zima batala maviyale de zima. Being sitting idle will give you to, to being promiscuous, right? Yeah, Why? You have that to do. All of a sudden, you find your hands in your pants. Excuse my French. But if you keep your hands busy, he won't go to places he shouldn't be going. And it doesn't make a difference. You could be pulling weeds in the garden or doing something else or painting or, or writing. But you're busy doing something. But when you're not, that's what happens. That's what the Torah hates. This is what we call wasting of a seed. Because you're wasting potential life on, in vain for nothing. It's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing. So it's not that the Yetzirah took over you. You gave it room, so you went inside. Don't give it room. Be busy. Busy yourself with something. Learn something. Clean your room. Clean the windows, I don't know, something, clean your teeth. 
clean your mind. But you're not. That's why <coughs> the highest level in our Avodah is not uh, uh, pushing things away or hiding things away or denial. Besides River of Egypt, you know, it's not denial. It's not a disconnect from our urges or being far from my urges or denying your own self. But on the contrary, the purpose is to take what we call Yetzer to Yetzer Tov, to take the bad and make it into good. And that could be done when you are aware of, of all the processes that happen inside of you, not an acknowledgement that it's not as a it or a root, an awakening to do something bad, on the contrary, is an awakening to do something good. You're just turning the direction of it. In such a, a, a state of awareness, a person could see when there is it, when there are difficulties, when the things, when some bad urge is coming to you, as a as a messenger, as a message from Hakadosh Baruch Hu, to work harder on yourself, to try to make it to put an effort in Avodat Hashem, and how by doing the opposite what the Yetzirah wants you to do. There is a Yetzirah. I know what it is but I'm going to make something good out of it. Things are just things. It depends how we interpret it, how we root them. And a person who is merited and able to do so, to remove his bad inclination into a, into a good inclination, for him there's no other reality than the reality of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Everything is, is, is in unity for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Because there's no such thing as good and bad. Everything is to serve God. And that's called Avodah of Adam HaShalem. Avodah of Adam HaShalem, of a complete person, a whole person, is even using the bad as a vessel to do good. Including the bad in the good. Achlalat hara, including the bad in the good. And maybe we can see now, if you want, we can see what, yeah, what is really, is, why is Yaakov going to Haran? And why does our neshama come to this world to begin with? So at the beginning of creation, after Adam and Rishon sinned, we had shach nitzatzot. How much is shach nitzatzot? 320. 320 sparks of the neshama of Adam and Rishon went to the words of, to the, to the section of the klipa, to the husks. In other words, to this world. That's why the Mekubalim says, that in any phenomena in the world, even in something that looks to us completely bad, there are also sparks of holiness. We need to find them, but there is. Rav Dessler says that the purpose of creation is the revelation of, his, of the kingdom of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, kingship in the world. In other words, the revelation of light of the Kadosh Baruch Hu to his creators, to his creations. The light of the creator to the creations. And whatever is not serving in that purpose doesn't have any existence. And did you see many times, as we say, you have a cup that, hold on, let me say, Shakol, I'm thirsty. You have a cup that falls and breaks. People say, Mazalto. So usually I say it's because the I don't know the father or the mother will not get angry. Oh Mazalto, oh yeah, okay, fine, Mazalto. Right? But really Lema say you should be happy because this is when the, the, the purpose of this clee was finished. So you should be so happy to see the the final usage of a clee of something, an entity that reached its end. That's it. It did its tikkun. Everything there is in its own. a kli, a cup, a, a vessel, a, everything has a spark in it. And a person as well. And a person as well. When a person dies, you know, it's hard for us. We are the ones mourning. But the mass say, you know, we should say, uh, maybe, I mean, chaz v'shalom, but I'll do l'shem I mean, he reaches the purpose. He's more complete than us. Because until you, 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 you're not done with your tikkun, 
That's it. You're still here. So, but anything that doesn't have that ability to reveal the light of Akadosh Baruch Hu does not have an existence. As long as there is a is a cleave a vessel, there is existence. And inside anything, I'm gonna keep on quoting. Anything has a a holiness and sin. We're gonna see next week's parasha. We're going to see actually this week's parasha. We're gonna see the aluf edom, aluf, 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 aluf. This is basically the seven blachim. According to the Ari, the Ari makes the light of the whole. Basically, the whole concept of the Kabbalah of the Ari is based on those seven kings that the Klipot that fell. And we're supposed to go and look for them like in a treasure hunt. We're supposed to go and excavate those sparks and everything in this world have those holy sparks from the breaking of those vessels. Everything has the nitzots inside of it, that gives them existence. Not that this cup is alive, but this cup is staying a cup because there's a holy vessel in it. And that's why I'm not quite sure recycle such a good thing. But <laughs> when it comes to think about it. But, uh, but, you know, it's only here and it's not breaking and falling apart because it's still serving a certain purpose. And as long as we... What? When I'm finished. So, uh, as long as, long as uh, we elevate, I mean, as soon as we elevate that nitzots up, therefore there's no, there's no more, there's no more chayuto because it finishes purpose. It, it reaches tikkun, tikkun shalem, whatever that tikkun would be. So Rav Desla, to, to finish it up, Rav Desla, Rav Desla tells us another thing for Avodah, regarding the Sulam which Yaakov saw, is when we look, we go up in the Sulam, right? It's not like you're running on an escalator. Or, I mean, you would say, why did Yaakov have to go on a ladder? Why could it make like steps? Stairway, you know, stairway to heaven. Huh? Stairway to heaven was written by a guy who doesn't understand anything about spirituality. I can tell you that for sure. Be a ladder. Why? Because when you run upstairs, what do you do? Sometimes you take a deep breath, and if you're a good shape, and you up, two seconds, you're up. You skip on steps, and you can go up, 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 up. I mean, when you go up on a ladder, you have to go and you have to stay even a bit on every step. You put your foot on, and every level do you put your foot on. And that shalav, that step that you stay on represents to us a certain delay. There has to be a certain delay because you, you, you're stuck in this level. However, also acknowledges to us that there is an ability to go up because if I would not stay, if I go straight up like this, I won't be able to go up. I'll, I'll just fall down. I need to go one foot at a time, one step, even if for a split of a second. So there is still chance to go up. How? By overcoming this delay, we go up. And by doing so, we're turning the delay into something positive. Because if it wasn't this delay, it wasn't good. We couldn't go up. The delay is needed to go up. As, the, as Rav Nachman Breslov says, it's good to fall down in the Madriga, one in one level to go up to. There's always a way down. But use the way down as, 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 a, as a momentum to push you forward, to propel you forward. Just like an arrow, when you pull it backwards to go forward, you don't push this forward, don't shoot at you. Right? Therefore, therefore, they showed him, they showed him the ladder. And each and every one of us has a ladder to climb on spiritually, is a ladder to, to climb on. And it's always important to remember that the delays and the difficulties that we face in our lives and so on are just like levels for us that we deal with it now in order to propel for us upstairs. Don't get overwhelmed by it and say, oh, I'm quitting, I'm going down. Use that to your advantage to go forward. Find a Kadosh Baruch Hu, that level, in that darkness, in that delay, in the difficulty to bring yourself up higher to the light. Understand that each letter is a stage for you that will help you grow. And in spirituality, you can't go from zero to, to, uh, to the speed of light with instantly. It takes time. You need to slowly, slowly go yourself up. You're going to go too up, too fast, you're going to fall down. 
you're going to fall down. And it's always uh, good to remember that everything is, happens for the best. Even if we just say it, right? And the, the, the mouth says it, the heart doesn't feel it. The mind says it, the heart doesn't feel it. It's still good to say it. You have to get used to, say, to do so because it's good to remember there is only one reshut in this world. And Zedda Kadosh Lakon. So there's no really point of complaining because there's going to be a delay in your progression to develop forward. Whatever difficulty you comes your way, it's not difficult. As they say, right? There's a town in the Gemara that says, Oh, Yisurim, Yalla, get up, come to me, Yalla, Boker. Yalla, Yisurim, Yalla, Bo. Aviancy, hello. So things are difficult for you. No, so what? Hayad Hashem Tiktsar. Kadosh Baruch Hu is incapable to help you. You have to pray a little bit more. You have to say, Kadosh Baruch Hu, it's okay, you know, I accept it. And as soon as you say it, you say, I'm going to continue. It's hard. It's hard for me. It's hard for me. But I'm continuing your death. I'm not throwing it behind. Then you're going to see how much miracles happen to you. Miracles. You don't need to be a uh, Yamsuf to see miracles. One after the other. But most of us just throw it behind. So it's not for me. This whole is a shtiyot. Then I'm going. And then you're in darkness the rest of your life. No, I'm trying to tell you and show you how to actually deal with difficulties in your life. How to reach a higher level of existence and don't fall into the drama queens that most people are. Most people in the world are drama queens. A queen is not such a question Ben from England, if you guys don't know. Let's start being drama queens. Roll your sleeves to just plow through it. And I told you this, I love this picture, I have this picture that you see a guy, he wears a gi, you just see his legs and his hands, he has like duct tape and he's all bleeding on his feet, he has callus, I mean, and it says two words you should never use, and it's I can't. Of course you can. Of course you can. And it all depends on your perspective, and your perspective determines everything. So we should not hope for difficulties. However, if they come, we know how to deal with it. Have a great week, Rabotai.